What's up guys? Welcome back to Texas Young Guns for another video, another weekend. Anyways, today we are going to be unboxing and installing the Poolwright 2400. So disclosing everything about this, we bought this with our own money. We went to the Houston RV show, which by the way, if you're going to make a major purchase like this, I highly suggest going to an RV show. You'll get the best deals. Uh, but we bought this at the RV show and we are eager to try it out this weekend for the first time. Reason why we are wanting to go to this style, which by the way, is a fifth wheel to gooseneck adapter, basically. So the base of this is gonna be like you're doing a gooseneck, uh, but the top part will install on your fifth wheel. And basically it converts it. Um, reason why we went to this is because we can easily pull this in and out of the truck. It is very lightweight compared to what we used to have with the Super Glide. Now the Super Glide, if you've watched our previous review of it, is a fantastic hitch. However, we do use our truck here, Silver Fox, which is my 2015 F250. We do use it for other stuff other than our fifth wheel. And I want to more easily take in and out our hitch without going through the trouble with a jack or something to lift it up in and out because it weighs at least 240 pounds. Now the downside with going with the hitch like this, as you will see, is that it is fixed. So the beautiful thing about the Poolwright Super Glide was that it slid back and forth um, automatically. So as the fifth wheel turned, it would slide back. Like I mentioned earlier, if you haven't seen that review, go back and watch that. It's a pretty cool hitch. Um, but the weight factor and the ease of hooking up your fifth wheel to your truck is the reason why we are trying this one out. So without further ado, let's get this thing unboxed. All right, so you can see here it is the Super Light 2400. It weighs about 50 pounds. I actually tested this out at the RV show. I got up into their truck there and I pulled it out. So let's see what we got. Looks like we got some kind of lever here. This is probably to reach in, in and out um, to undo your hitch. Got to another box here to install the hardware. And of course we have the main hitch itself. Um, looks like we had the pins. Uh, so this particular hitch is meant for bed rails. They do make other versions if you have like a factory puck system or something like that. But here's the pins. This seems like an empty box, probably just for packing purposes. Yeah, it's completely empty. And of course the owner's manual, AKA the instructions, which I'm a typical guy, so I may or may not use. And we will go ahead and take this out of the box. I will show you how light it is uh, just by me picking it up right now. So uh, before we take it out, the max trailer gross weight weight rating is 20,000 pounds. Um, so basically with your trailer and all the crap in it, it needs to weigh less than 20,000 pounds. The pin weight, which is how much weight is being pushed down on your truck, not the overall weight of the trailer, but the amount that it's actually pushing down on your truck from the weight on the tongue is 5,000 pounds in this hitch. So let's take it out. All right, so here is the hitch itself. Um, below it, it has the tabs, which will be going into your rail mounts over there. Um, here is the head. This is what will go on the fifth wheel side. Um, and this ball will be upside down and it will go into this slot here. Um, this hook that they give you is for reaching in, I would assume, and pulling that out and using it, unlocking your trailer when you're trying to pull it out. And that is all they give you. So one thing that's adjustable on this hitch is the height of this guy here. This actually comes up and down like this, as better illustrated by this picture in the owner's manual. So you have three heights to choose from, one, two, three. So depending on how your bed rail is set up, which truck you have, how high or how low you need it, you can move it up and down. They also show you in the manual how to install the king pin adapter. So as you can see here, your king pin will go into the plate here. It will be secured by all these nuts and bolts, which by the way, are already kind of in place on this. You just have to unscrew them. So there's no like extra bag of parts, which is nice. But once you install it, this ball is what will actually go into the top of the 20K here. 
the 2400. So we will hitch this up later as a test, but I did want to show you here that the proper way of dropping your trailer into the hitch is to pull out the little like oval shaped thing with the hook I showed you earlier. That's this guy right here. And you want to make sure it's out, otherwise damage could incur. The other thing it talks about is the one, which is one of the positives of this hitch. So the ball does not have to be exactly over this hole right here. As long as it is somewhere in this cup, the trailer will slide into the hole depending on where it is. But as long as you can get the, the ball of the makeshift gooseneck hitch somewhere over this bowl, it'll slide into the middle there as you lower your trailer, which is one of the big benefits of this hitch and is partly what makes it so easy. And of course, as you are doing your tow, basically it's just showing you that if it is sucked in like it is right now over here, that is correct. If it is still in the outward position, that means that your trailer is not locked down to the hitch and you need to turn and make sure that it goes into the locked position. So here we are in the truck. We're going to go ahead and install the base here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the pins that I already have in there that I used on the Super Glide. Basically put them back in there so I wouldn't lose them. Now we're going to grab the base and move it to the truck. And boom, it is in there. So before you walk away, I would go ahead and put the pins in. Alright, so now we are over here at the fifth wheel. It is time to install the actual plate that has the hitch on it. As you can probably tell, it's a pretty tight snug, which I prefer, but I use this rubber hammer so I don't do any damage to the plate here, but it gets it up there nice and snug. The next thing it wants us to do is take the large bolt, carriage bolt um, and nut, and this one doesn't have a tube. We will put it through this first hole. and take the nut, it says to tighten by hand only. And now it wants to put the sleeve, the back hole is actually larger. It wants you to take and put the tube in there with the carriage bolt through it and do the same thing. Install the nut, but hand tighten only. On this next step, you will need a 9 16 inch socket as well as a 9 16 inch wrench. And we will go around and tighten all of these vertical bolts. Now you want to tighten these evenly. There might be, you might see a gap in between the big kingpin here and the top of this adapter plate which is perfectly normal. All right, so we have the gap in between the plate and the fifth pin even. Um, the bolts, these four bolts, two on this side, two on the other side are tight evenly. And then the last thing is you wanna tighten these nuts up here. All this is is, is about to 20 pounds torque. Um, last thing we're gonna do here is we're going to tighten the original two large bolts um, all the way and this is actually going all the way up to 75 foot-pounds of torque um, So what's happening here is that these bolts here actually go over the king pin and so as This sits here These bolts here are pushing the whole adapter plate downwards and it's forcing these big bolts here to push down on the king pin so in essence, these smaller four bolts here are creating pressure 
on this adapter plate down onto these carriage bolts. Now, like I said, the last step here is to tighten these bolts. So you're going to need a three quarter inch socket or torque wrench would be better. And as well as a wrench to grab the other side. And let's tighten these up. So if you look, there's actually going to be a gap like this. You can see the side bolts are pushing up. And if we look in here, the large bolts in there are pushing down on top of the kingpin itself. So once you get all this done, this is very tight on there. Now notice how the gap all the way across is pretty even on mine. I'm talking about this gap right here. This is what they want. Also, when you're installing this, note that this ball right here, I have it oriented to give me more space away from the cab, but you do have two angles that you can install this at. You can install it like this, where it gives you a little bit more distance from the trailer to the cab, or you can rotate it 180 degrees and for whatever reason, have it closer to the trailer. I think most people, would, especially with short boxes, um, are going to be installing it like this. Maybe somebody with a long bed who wants more of the weight towards the cab will install it the other way, but I believe probably 99% of people are going to be installing it like this. So I'm going to get back in the truck here and I'm going to do a couple things. The first page of the instructions, um, or maybe not the first page, but one of the beginning pages talks about this pin here. I'm actually going to raise it up a little bit. I believe this is probably going to be a little too low. And don't forget to loosen these tensioning bolts in the back. And the last thing you want to do before you hook it up is give it a little loop. So we're going to take a little WD-40 here. I'm going to lube it up really good. So it's a little low, so we're gonna have to raise it up here. It's now the trailer was on hitch height for the old Super Glide. That should just be high enough. And you remember, before we attempt to drop this into the hitch, we have it in the unlocked position. As you can see, we use the handle they give us. So that's the locked position. You wanna pull it out and turn it till it stays pulled out. All right, so one of the beautiful things about this hitch, like I mentioned at the beginning, is that you can see that it's not perfect. Um, so it's not perfectly over the hole, but with this bowl right here, if you get it, the ball above the bowl, it will slide in there. So let's go ahead and lower this for the first time. See if we can get it locked in. All right, so the weight of the trailer is completely on the hitch. Last thing you do, pull this out and make sure it goes in. And it is locked in, it is in the safety position. All right, so now that we hooked it up for the first time, I am now looking for the gap. Um, the gap that I'm looking at is a gap between the top rails and the bottom of the fifth wheel. And I don't know if you can notice in camera, but it is a lot higher up here than it is back here. I believe you're gonna want it as even as possible. So maybe if I move to the left a little bit, you'll be able to tell that it's a little higher. Maybe that angle will show you a little bit better. But I believe we need to re-lower this back to the original first notch. I guess we could have hooked it up first to see if there was any adjustments that were needed because um, apparently the first one was the correct one. But hey, at least you got to see how you would change it if your truck is different. So let's go ahead and lift the trailer back up and we will readjust the hitch to be back to that lower first position. So remember when you're unhitching, you need to unlock it first. So basically pull it out and turn it to the left. 
and you are ready to raise the trailer. Man, this is so much easier than the Super Glide. Not that the Super Glide is overly tough, but if you're comparing the two, there's no competition here. Oh yeah, the gap is much better. So I think something else you might look for um, is when you're adjusting these is the distance between the back top of your truck bed and the trailer. Because what you don't want to happen is you don't want to be going down a hill or something like this and the trailer hits this. Um, because what you're trying to avoid here is you're trying to put too much angle on the ball there, on the gooseneck ball. Because remember, it only has so much degrees of deflection. Um, the ball and the stem that the ball is on only has so much that it can rotate inside that cup in there. So that's basically what you're looking for. So this is about as level as the trailer is going to get. The gap is not even, but almost even. Um, since it's at the lowest setting, that's basically where it's going to be. And my gosh, the hooking up process is so much easier. Before I forget to mention, it, it's important to note that um, the hitch, the base plate does have holes right here, here in different locations. That way, when you are hooking up safety chains, you can hook it up to those holes down to the either this base plate, this base uh, rail, or somewhere on your truck for safety. So the base plate does have that option in there for you. Um, if you want to or if you're required to by law in your state. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, I think I'm going to like this hitch, but we'll test it out for a little bit. We'll actually do real world use um, starting this weekend. Actually, we're going to be going to Margaritaville. So make sure to subscribe to our channel um, if you're excited about seeing that one. I know we're excited on going testing it out. This is the Margaritaville down in Bolivar that just recently changed hands from Bolivar RV Resort over to Margaritaville. So we're very excited to see the changes. I hope you enjoyed that video on this hitch. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, go to all the social medias. Uh, we put out content pretty regularly. So guys, what else can I say? Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.